Hey kids, you want to see Leonardo DiCaprio get mauled by a grizzly bear? Sure you do. That really should have been the tagline for this movie. Come watch Leo get torn apart by a grizzly. Fun for the whole family. So I finally saw The Revenant, the latest movie from director Alejandro Iñárritu, which stars Leonardo DiCaprio as hunter Hugh Glass. Glass is part of a hunting expedition in the American wilderness, and at some point he comes a little too close to a mama grizzly bear and her cubs, and mommy does not like that one bit. So she mauls the ever-loving shit out of glass, nearly kills the man, and he is ultimately betrayed by one of his fellow hunters, John Fitzgerald, played by Tom Hardy, and left for dead. Against insurmountable odds and using his survival skills and sheer force of fucking will, Glass must find a way to survive and get his revenge. So this story is based on true events, loosely, very loosely by my understanding. Uh, but yeah, it is one hell of a survival story. Glass goes through so much shit. Nearly gets killed by a grizzly, then witnesses something very tragic while he's lying there near death. Gets betrayed by his buddy Fitzgerald. And with his body barely holding together, he has to traverse the American wilderness in the middle of the damn winter, dealing with the cold and having to find food and constantly under the threat of being attacked by some angry Arikara natives. And it's just an absolute mess. What he goes through is brutal and horrifying and perhaps just a little bit improbable. Not only does he get mauled by the grizzly, but he also spends a good chunk of this movie swimming in the river in the middle of winter, and yet doesn't die from hypothermia. Perhaps not impossible, but it does seem a bit of a stretch, especially for a movie that's supposedly based on true events. And I may be in the minority here, but I thought his trip through the wilderness went on a little bit longer than it needed to. Once we got around the two hour mark, I was starting to think, okay, he's going through a lot of shit, his life sucks, we get it, can we just get on with him and Tom Hardy fighting it out already? There was also this weird subplot involving the Arikara. One of these uh, natives is apparently searching for his kidnapped daughter, and the whole thing just seemed kind of superfluous to me. If you took that out of the story, you wouldn't really change that much except for one tiny little bit of the ending that we really didn't need. They establish in the movie that Glass took a Native American woman for his wife, and I thought that this Arikara guy's daughter was supposed to have some sort of connection to her. No. Nope, no connection. It's just there. The whole thing just feels tacked on. Now, once we get to the actual revenge and the final confrontation between Hardy and DiCaprio, holy shit, that fight was brutal. That is one of the best fight scenes I have seen in a good long while, and a good chunk of it was done in one take. It kind of reminded me of that one fight in Creed, except instead of a friendly sporting event, this was two angry motherfuckers trying to kill each other. The movie is shot very well overall. I think Inurito did an excellent job here. The landscapes look very beautiful and very unforgiving at the same time. And pretty much all of the animals that we see in this movie are CGI, and they were... Uh, they were okay. N nothing spectacular, but not really bad either. I, I'm really not sure why this movie got a nomination for Best Visual Effects. I think... That's kind of stretching it, but that's just my opinion. And speaking of Oscar nominations, can we just give the award to DiCaprio already? Because he earned it with this one. He was so good. Genuinely looked like he was on the verge of death so many times, which is both a testament to his acting and to the makeup department, I suppose. Tom Hardy's performance was pretty damn good as well. I will say his betrayal of Glass was pretty predictable. He's pretty much an asshole from minute one in this movie, but that's not really his fault, and he does a great job with what he has to work with. And I also want to mention Will Poulter, who plays Fitzgerald's unwitting sidekick of sorts, Bridger, because he was really good in this movie, and it's, I believe, the first movie I've ever seen this kid in, and I thought he did a really good job. More people should be talking about this guy, and they probably will in the near future, since from what I hear, he's supposed to be the new Pennywise in the remake of Stephen King's It. Because that's apparently happening. So, final verdict? It has a few issues here and there, but it's still very well put together. DiCaprio's performance is awesome, and I can see why people are speaking so highly of this one.
It is definitely not for the faint of heart, but if you got the fortitude for this movie, I would say it is at the very least worth a matinee. Had I seen this movie in 2015, I don't think I would have put it in my top 10, but it would have gotten at least an honorable mention. But as I said, because of the way this movie is released, I don't consider it a 2015 movie. I don't care what the Oscars say. I'm counting this one for 2016. And before anyone asks if this will be in my 2016 top 10, because I know someone will, it's January. I don't know. You think I'm joking, but someone's gonna ask. They always do. And that's about all I have to say about The Revenant. So until next time, take care. And watch out for bears.